Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Photo Biz Live. This is Danny from the Photo Biz team. Today, we're going to be joined by Paul A. from our passionate support team, and he's going to be going over how to upgrade to our new HTML5 portfolio sites. So um, many of you who are attending today have had the opportunity to talk to either myself or Paul on the support team, and we're more than glad to see your faces in here today and happy that everyone joined us today. Uh, Paul's got a great session planned for you today. He's going to be showing you how to upgrade to the brand new HTML portfolio site and answer any questions about it. So in addition to getting the opportunity to learn from Paul in today's webinar, we're going to have a question and answer session at the end of the webinar. You can submit your questions using the chat tool and they're going to be answered after the presentation. You can also join this discussion on Twitter by using the hashtag poundphotobizlive. So if at any point during today's webinar you have any difficulty hearing the speaker or seeing the slides, just use the comment box to let us know. If you're experiencing audio cutting in and out, please make sure that you're not running a bunch of different processes or if you're editing, you know, you may want to minimize that. Um, the webinar software does use some of your system's memory up, so just keep that in mind. And we are going to be recording this webinar and placing it on our YouTube channel for playback. So you guys can check that out at youtube.com forward slash photoviz. And be sure to subscribe while you're there. But with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and turn things over to Paul and let him jump into today's session. Thank you, Danny, and hello, everyone. My name is Paul. I am from the very passionate support team here at PhotoBiz, and I have the absolute pleasure of speaking with everyone today about the HTML5 portfolio site, how to upgrade, and um, and we'll do, do a couple of other things along with it. We will actually go over importing your content all right, from your old Flash site into the HTML5 site. We're going to go ahead and go over the entire HTML5 control panel. And also I'm going to show everyone how to switch their domain name from their old Flash site to HTML5. So we have a couple of things to talk about today, and I'm, I'm really excited about it. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I'm actually going to be showing you a live walkthrough of everything today. Um, and I'm going to be, start from the beginning. Um, if there are anyone out there that has not actually purchased the HTML5 site yet, you will actually see the HTML5 icon under the available products area on the main page of your PhotoBiz account. Now once you actually click on that HTML5 icon under the available products and make the purchase, um, you will have it available under your products. Now please keep in mind also, you may be eligible for the PhotoBiz loyalty discount and you will see exactly um, what the price will be and how much you'll be saving if that is applied to your account. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. Once you've actually purchased the HTML5 portfolio site, Again, it's going to be under your products, just as seen here. And you can actually click into it, and I'm going to go to the one we'll be using today. And this is going to be the first page that you actually come to, okay? And you'll notice here, this is actually our import page. This is something that you have to do before you can actually get into the uh, HTML5 control panel. And you'll see here that you're able to import content from your Flash site into the HTML5 site. Now, one and very important, very important thing to note here is that if you have any additional sites or any subdomains along with your PhotoBiz account, they will all be listed right here. And you will have to actually choose which one you want to import into your HTML5 site. Now, you can also take note here that the import process will copy images from home, gallery information, and contact pages, uh, web page and SEO text, and web page settings from your Flash HTML control panel into your HTML5 control panel. And so it's very, very important that you select the, the correct one because once you actually do this and then click the checkbox here to acknowledge that it cannot be undone, and then you hit, yes, please import my information, you cannot change that back, so very important that you do get this right the first time. Real quick though, I would like to go back to the main page and into my old Flash site. In here you'll notice I have all my images and um, there's actually all my text content for my, my information pages here. Everything is right here on my, my old Flash site. On the HTML5 site, it's not there yet, but by simply clicking the Flash site that I want to import from, checking this box here, and then click, yes, please import my information, it's automatically going to import everything. Now, I am on my HTML5 control panel now, and you'll see if I click on the Images tab up here, all of my images from the Flash site that I've selected were imported over. 
again, along with the text content or whatever other content uh, that we had just went over, did come along into the HTML5 site. So it really does make it very easy for you to make a, a nice quick switch over to HTML5, and um, it really takes care of, of all your legwork. You won't have to reinvent the wheel, if you will. I love HTML5. This is giving me the ability to have one site that's going to look the same on all devices out there. Okay. Now, if you take a look here, it looks very, very similar. A couple of, couple of changes, but very, very similar to your Flash control panel. You still have the web pages icon up at the top here. This is basically this area that you're seeing on the left-hand side where you're able to add your pages, delete pages, um, and actually adjust the settings on each page. So for instance, I have a home page here that's actually made into a gallery page. You'll notice from the drop down right here, we have several different pages. My home page is a gallery page, and then you'll see the different tabs up along this area. Now in order for me to upload images into my home page, I'll click on the images icon or images tab, click upload images, and then it will allow you to browse, find your images, and easily upload them into your site. A very neat feature that has been added is the layout feature. Now, what the layout feature is doing for you is it is allowing you to have thumbnails or not on your page. So, for instance, if I wanted to go to my home page, I didn't really want any thumbnails on it. So I just went ahead and clicked no thumbnails, hit save changes, and now it actually displays my home page with no thumbnails as you can see. However, if I did want to show thumbnails, all I'd have to do is click on the thumbnails section here, save changes, have it load up, and now you will see the thumbnails. Very neat and easy to use. Here's the slideshow function. Um, this will, one, allow me to set it up if I want to play the slideshow automatically or not. That, that's been something that our customers have asked for a little while now that we have implemented into the new HTML5 site. And also the transition, and you'll notice there are a couple of different transitions here, and we will probably see some uh, more along the way as time goes on. And here you also see our speed controls. Very slow, slow, smooth, jazzy, and techno. And this will control the speed of the transition of your images. The music tab will let you go ahead and select whatever music you have, whether it's uh, one of the, the, the stock songs that we have in here, or if you've actually used the music PDF area to upload your own song, you will see those uploaded songs under the section that says your songs. And then we have the last tab up here, which is the SEO tab. Now this, of course, is where you're going to put in your metadata, your page title, description, and keywords. Now this is specific to this home page. Okay, this is not for the whole site. This is to this home page only. Um, each one of your pages will have this. The gallery pages, information pages, uh, and so on will have the, the metadata area or SEO area for you to go ahead and fully optimize each page of your website. So that was the galleries page. Next thing I'd like to go over is the actual information page. And this has been changed quite a bit uh, from the old Flash site. It lets you do a little bit more um, and made it a little bit easier on you. As you'll notice, there are the same tabs up at the top. Images, of course, to upload your images. The Layout tab will actually let you choose whether or not you want your image, if you're going to uplo upload one to the information page, to sit on the left-hand side or on the right-hand side. Just like we looked at a second ago, there is a transition uh, or slideshow tab that will let you select the different transition and speed of the transition. And again, the search engine optimization area specific to this page. I did want to go over this real quick with you. The details area will allow you to name the specific page, let you mark it visible, hidden, or disabled. It does show you the unique URL for this specific page. And um, this is very important, especially if you want to provide your customers with a direct link into any one of the pages. Or if you have a splash intro page and you want to link from your splash intro page into a specific information page or gallery page out there. This is actually where you would get it from. Next, we have the text content area. Now, this is a new text editor that we have um, placed on the HTML5 sites. It's, um, you know, look very similar to the old Flash one. However, there are some changes here 
you will see that there's actually an HTML button now specifically to the information pages on the HTML5 portfolio sites. If you click on the HTML button, it will give you your basically your, the whole HTML source editor for this specific page. What makes this unique is the fact that you're now able to use HTML coding on these pages. So maybe you have a specific uh, a code for a badge or maybe you want to place a video on this page. You're able to copy that code, paste it into here, and then you would actually see that video badge or whatever it may be on this page. One, one note that I would like to, to make though is that you have to be very careful that whenever you are pasting code into any page that you're dealing with HTML coding that that code is, is right, is correct because the smallest character off can uh, potentially mess that page up a little bit and then you might have to delete the whole code, find something else and replace it. And of course if you have any questions or concerns uh, you're more than welcome to, to pick up the phone and give us a call here at our passionate support line and we'll be more than happy to assist you. Also, right next to the HTML tab, there's another new tab. This is the table. You, you, you are able to insert a table which will um, help you maybe organize your text in a better way on the specific page. If you want to create different columns and margins, you can certainly do that using the table function. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call. And then the rest of the text editor is pretty much um, standard. You have the bullets, of course you have your alignment tabs. Uh, we have a, another new function here. This is where you can actually select your text and choose the color. However, this tab here or this button will let you select the background color for the text. So if you have text on your information page and would like to maybe highlight that, you can just select your text that you'd like to highlight and choose a color. And basically what that's going to do is put that color as a background behind that specific text. Alrighty, that's really the, the main part of the web pages icon. Again, any questions, send us a support ticket through the support button up at the top of the page here. You can create a support ticket, choose a subject, ask your question, send it on over, and you will get an email response or a phone call directly from our passionate support team to, uh, to assist you. And of course, you can give us a call. We did just go over importing and we took a look at the different pages. However, a lot of you may be really excited to see what templates are available for HTML5. Currently, there are 15 templates available. Just released a new one recently, the Maroma template. And uh, if you know anything about Photobiz at all is that we really work on putting out as many options for you as possible. So you will see more templates coming this way. And, um, and we really have some beautiful templates out here. What's really neat about this area is that you are easily able to just simply click on any one of the preview buttons to take a preview of how your content on your website would look on any of these templates without even changing it. So if I wanted to take a look at Borough Beach, which is actually one of my favorite templates, all I have to do is click on preview and it will show me my work on this HTML5 template. Again, preview and it will show you your work on any template available for the for the HTML5 portfolio sites. Really, really neat feature. This this will allow you to make a, um, a decision without having to save the changes. Um, you can look through all the templates fairly quickly and decide which one you want. And then when you are ready and you say, okay, I love this template and the color scheme that goes along with it, and here are your color schemes, all you would have to do is simply click the save button. And just like that, all of your text content, images, everything you have will move over to this new template with one click of a button. A very, very... Uh, awesome feature that Photobiz has for, for our clients. So that is the templates area. And moving on to the color picker, this has been changed a little bit from your old flash site. If anyone has maybe the, uh, the store or biz sites or blogs, this will look a little familiar to you. We've actually used that color picker in the HTML5 area. So with that being said, if I have one specific color scheme, I can take a look here. I have selected the Bombay color scheme. You can actually click on the word Bombay and it will give you a preview of this specific um, color scheme. This is really neat. I, there may be a, a lot of people out there that didn't know you can easily look at any of the color schemes that you have or you have created with simply just clicking on the word without actually having to save it. Now if I wanted to customize it, I can simply click customize. And here's the color picker. If you know the hex color code, you can simply paste it right in there or all you'd have to do is click on the little colored square next to it and use the color picker here to be able to select any color you want for any of the specific fields of the color picker.
important note here as well there may be some of you out there that do actually change it within the color picker and um, and you preview the site and you're wondering well I, I'm not seeing my changes made what's going on always remember that after you customize it it's not going to save it for you as as far as it being your template until you actually go in and select your color scheme to be the one that you've customized so here's the Bombay copy the one I just created again I can take a quick look at it yeah, that green is what I just changed on it okay if I'm happy with that all I have to do is click the radio button right there save changes and now you will see that those changes have taken effect on the control panel keep in mind if you do want this change to go live you will have to republish your website by clicking on the publish icon and publish now alrighty a couple of other things to look at here the splash intro page now uh, there may be some of you out there that are not familiar with the, with what a splash intro is a splash intro is actually a landing page that you're able to create some of you out there may have been to a website that says click here for website click here for blog and click here for maybe Facebook and there's several different links um, you know that you can click on to get to any one of those pages um, that is a splash intro page this icon here this area here is where you can create that you can make it from everything from a very basic splash intro page to a very customized um, splash intro page where you're able to use different coding upload a custom background your your custom logo so on and so forth um, but you will see here under the splash intro area that in order to actually see it come up you'll have to click yes to activate splash intro you're able to update the splash background color and text color right here. The heading text, say you did not um, you know, want to put your logo or don't have a logo on the site yet, you can type in some text here that would act almost like the, the logo for your splash intro page. Then here's the footer text. A very important area for those that want to put maybe some introduction text on their landing page or splash intro page um, a lot of folks out there use it um, to put some quick information welcoming people into the website um, this this text also can benefit you with a search engine um, optimization as long as you know used properly um, but also you're able to use this footer text area to place an HTML coding again there's a lot of folks out there that may want to put you know their wedding wire badge up there or maybe the not badge or maybe they want to put on some kind of special coding for the, a Facebook like box or button that they may have you're able to paste that text right into here save the changes and then you would see it reflected on the splash intro page the next tab up at the top here is the intro links tab now this is here for you to be able to create a link that's going to be able to be directed specifically either into another site like an external website or from any list of your uh, your web pages that you may have so for instance if I wanted to go ahead and link into let's say my about the photographer page I have here I click on about the photographer click on details go ahead and highlight the direct page link copy it Go into the splash intro click create link and then here where it says where it says provide an external website address I will actually copy I'm sorry paste that URL right in here and it will create the link for me now you'll see a very very light box here now if you actually click on that box you're able to upload an image to represent this specific um, link right which which most people will do out there I'm not going to do that right now but I am going to name this info page at the top and hit save changes I just want to show you real quick this is there's not going to be anything that's going to be going along with this other than the word but I did want to show you what I uh, what I meant by it so if you can imagine there can be a an image here click on info page and now what it's going to do for me is actually bring me directly in to my specific info page now I don't have any images or text on here right now but it would have brought me directly into the info page and then of course what you would do is create a link for each link that you want to put on your splash intro page again website blog Facebook those are all very popular links to link to on a splash intro page the background tab will allow you to actually select from one of the stock backgrounds that we have placed in here we do have a nice collection going here you can select from one of our tile backgrounds or one of our full page backgrounds most importantly you'll be you'll have that that creative edge to be able to upload your own custom 
background that you may have created. And then there are different background image settings allowing you to tile it certain ways and center it, center it certain ways and also scale and stretch to fit. So for instance, I will just select maybe the, um, the gray lines, our newest background, save changes, and just like that, you'll see that it's placed on my splash intro now. Now if I decided that I wanted to center it or change anything like that, I can just do it right there and you'll see that it actually controls where that background is sitting. All right, pretty easy, point and click. As long as you know how to use a mouse, you can do all this. All right, next section is the logo area. Here you're able to go ahead and upload your logo to your splash intro page. Again, um, just browse for your file, select it, and upload it. You're also able to align your logo, left, center, and right. Pretty self-explanatory. And then we also have the search engine optimization tab. Again, um, this should be used specifically for whatever content you have on the splash intro page. Okay, so um, you'll name you'll name it description keywords specific to that page. Hit save changes, and you will be um, ready to go. For now, I'm going to deactivate the splash intro page. I think everyone knows exactly what this fancy little button here does. The preview button will allow you to take a look at your website and the changes that you have made pre-publishing the website. Great, great tool for you to be able to take your time, customize the website, um, do whatever you'd like to it, and if you do not want the world to see it yet, you just simply do not publish those changes, but you're able to see it through the preview icon. All right. This has changed a little bit, or at least the name has. On the old flash area, the flash control panel, you would have seen the SEO um, icon. Well, it is renamed to Metas now. And here, you're actually able to place your metadata information. Now, I consider this to be the global metadata or global search engine optimization area. This is for the whole site, okay? Again, you're able to put in your website title, description, keywords. Um, it does show you the, the maximum characters that are allowed for each one of these areas. Um, of course, if you have any questions or concerns about search engine optimization, you can give us a call here at PhotoBiz, and we'll be happy to provide you with a search engine optimization consultation or for those that do not want to um, that do not want to do this themselves, don't have the time, uh, we have a great service on your main page um, that is SEO, where you can actually click on, take a look at what's to offer, and if you feel like that would be a good fit for you, click on that and um, and purchase it there, and we will actually um, help you out with your search engine optimization and and take care of it over here. All right, so that is the Metas area. Next is the settings. I really think that we've made this a little bit easier as well. Um, the settings area here is now a drop-down menu, and you'll see there's general, fonts, background, logo, icons, and site analytics. Now, the general area, very simple. Um, it, it will allow you to place your header text, align the header, and also footer text. A favicon, which some of you may or may not know, a favicon is the little icon or little image that you can place up in your browser window. So like if you take a look up here, you'll see the little P for PhotoBiz. Photo this is actually a favicon that you're able to upload into the site. Uh, quick note, favicons, I believe 16 by 16 pixels, and it has to be a .ico file, okay? Any questions or concerns, give us a call and we'll be happy to assist with that. Here's your font bank, and it will show you which, which uh, each one of these areas will apply to, so my header, Logo, navigation, page title, content, and this is going to be specifically for like your information page uh, text, and then your form fields text. And you will see if you check the drop down box, you have a nice amount of fonts uh, available here and may see some more coming in the future as well. Next, we have the background area. Again, you saw this under the splash intro page. You are able to uh, you know, upload the same background for your the background of your website that you have on the splash intro page, or maybe you want something different. This will allow you to do it here. And this is for the background of the actual website. The logo area, pretty self-explanatory. Here you can upload your logo, whether it's a JPEG file or a PNG file. And if you actually click on the PNG, it will tell you the um, maximum dimensions that you can have here. Again, you can align your logo using these buttons here. And of course, once you do that, hit update so those changes can be saved. Next, you will notice the icons area. This is a little bit different from the flash control panel. Here, you will be able to click on icons, add an icon, select which icon you would like, and then put in your Facebook URL or Twitter URL, whatever icon you select. 
you would put the website address right there, choose which target you want, meaning how the window is going to open. Whether it's in a new window or open in the same window, I typically recommend new window. This way, if someone goes to your Facebook page, your website remains in the background, so when they exit out, your website will still be back there for your customer to navigate around and not forget about it. Tool tip. This is a great little function here. What this will do for you is uh, once you create the icon and place it on the website, if you have any text in here for the tooltip and, and your viewer actually puts their mouse over the specific icon on the website, it will come up with a little caption displaying the tooltip. So if I chose Facebook as an icon, I would put Facebook as the tooltip and then they would be able to place their their mouse over that icon on the website and see, oh, okay, this is Facebook. Disable background music simply means this. If you have any music playing on your website at all and someone clicks on one of the icons on your control panel, or I'm sorry, on your website, the background music from the website would automatically shut off and bring up the page displaying whatever social media or whatever um, site you're linking to through the icon. All right, and then you have icon settings over here. This is simply for your color. Um, you'll either have grayscale or original icon colors. Grayscale simply means that the icon will appear gray. If you put your mouse over it, you'll see the color. Original colors will actually mean that you'll see the original actual colors of the specific icon in there. I typically like original icon colors because it makes the icon pop a little bit more makes it stand out a bit more for your viewer to be able to see clearly. This is something that has also changed the site analytics. All right, this page is specifically for your Google Analytics ID and your Google Webmaster Tools meta verification code. Now through your Google Analytics, you'll be able to get the actual ID or the UA number within the code, copy that and paste that right into here. And as far as Google Webmaster Tools go, you'll get the uh, meta verification code and paste it right in here. All right, now note that whenever you are, if you haven't signed up with Google Webmaster Tools yet, and you will be, um, the meta tag code, I believe, is actually going to be an alternate method. So you want to choose alternate method, and you want to choose meta tag. Okay, copy that meta verification code, paste it on in here, save changes, and then in order for Google to see that you're trying to verify the site, you would want to go ahead and republish the site so they can see it. And now we have the publish icon. Self-explanatory, a lot of you out there know exactly what this is. However, sometimes you'll be making all, you'll, you'll work tirelessly on your, on your website and you're, you're doing all this and then you finally go to the website and you say, oh gosh, I don't, nothing that I've just done is appearing on my website. Well, it's not going to until you actually republish the website. So any changes that you make, you come in here, click publish, click publish now, all the changes that you have made will be now published and available to see on your live website. And to take a quick look at that, all you'd have to do is click view live site, and then you'd be able to see what it looks like to the rest of the world. The last little icon here that we have is extras. This is really going to be for you if you decide that you want to have an extra HTML5 portfolio site. You're able to come in here and, and purchase it. Again, um, if you have a loyalty discount, it will be shown in here and show you how much you are saving. But if you do decide to get an additional HTML5 portfolio site, it'll be a subdomain, meaning it'll be something dot your domain name dot com. So for instance, uh, weddings dot photobiz dot com or portraits dot photobiz dot com. But it is an, a nice way to um, have an additional site, uh, keep your branding all together, and work through it through the same control panel. If you do have an additional site, you'll be able to see up here under current site, and drop it down and go to any one of your uh, additional sites that you have to work on it that way. All right, so that's a, you know, a fairly quick walkthrough of the HTML5 control panel. The last thing that I wanted to show everyone how to do, now that we have our HTML site built, everything is imported over, I've selected my template and my color uh, my color scheme that I wanted and you know reviewed everything and I really want it to go live but I want it to be now my main domain name I don't want my main domain name to be my flash anymore I now want it to be my HTML5 site so if I go to paul.com I don't want it to be my flash site anymore I would like it to be my HTML5 site in order to do that you can now do that on your own all you'd have to do is click on domains up at the very top of the uh, control panel and what you'll see 
when you on your account not not so much here but when you click on domains you're going to see an area that says um, edit main site and it's going to be next to your flash HTML icon so when you first go here you'll see that your flash site is actually still your main domain you'll click edit main site a radio button will be will come up next to your HTML5 icon you'll click on that and hit save changes and that will make your HTML5 site the main domain it'll do a switch for you okay uh, any trouble with that at all you can simply give us a call or send us a support ticket we'll be more than happy to go over that with you but um you know very very easy to do again we, we'd love to have your call so give us a call we'll be happy to assist all right so as you can see the switch is very easy hopefully if there was anyone on the fence out there about getting the HTML5 site because you didn't want to have to you know rebuild it and type in all of your text and upload your images you can see that it's a really easy import function to to go through and to have this new awesome fresh updated site um, that you can really update in the matter of, of minutes. I um, hope that helped everyone out out there. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn it back over to Danny so we can uh, do a little bit of Q&A. Thank you so much, everyone. All right, and I want to thank Paul again for the great presentation. So we do see quite a, f um, a few questions in here. We're going to do our best to answer them in the order which they were received. So just bear with us while we go through those real quick. And if you do have any new questions, go ahead and ask those now. All right, and uh, we have a lot of questions that came in. A lot of you guys have similar ones. We're going to go ahead and let Paul jump right into those. So um, I guess really the biggest question that I'm seeing here is what are the main differences between HTML5 and Flash? Why is it better? And do you have to upgrade? So those are a few questions right there. Hopefully those uh, with Paul's answer, that will uh, take care of all those questions for you. Thank you, Danny. And again, thank you, everyone, for your questions. Um, the biggest question that I do see here um, is, you know, why is the HTML5 site better? Um, what are the differences and why do I need to change? The truth is, is that you don't need to change to anything. The Flash and HTML sites, um, they work great. Uh, you have a number of different templates available in Flash. Uh, they look very nice. Um, however, some of the benefits to HTML5 over Flash um, would be that, for instance, on maybe some slower devices out there, HTML does tend to load quicker than, than Flash may. Okay, that, that's one important thing to, to a lot of folks out there. Um, also, on top of that, when you have the Flash and HTML site, which is perfectly fine, um, but you do have mirror sites. So as even though you can get them to look very, very similar, they're still technically two different sites. Um, same content on them, but two different looks is what I should say. Um, HTML5 takes that out of the equation. This HTML5 is going to be seen the same exact way in all devices, whether you're on a, a desktop computer, laptop, iPad, iPhone, any device out there, HTML5 will be seen the same way. Um, so that's really, really the main difference. Some folks out there just want to, you know, have that, that one HTML5 site and not worry about the mirror sites so they you know they tend to go over to um, HTML5 please also keep in mind um, that you know if you're still not too sure about it and you want to just take a look and see how it's how it builds for you um, this does come with the 14 day money back period so if you decide that you don't want it within the 14 day period cancel it and we'll give you your money back but um, those are the the main the main differences again flash and HTML is fine HTML5 um, is, is just a nice way to get a new fresh uh, feel to your website and look the same across all devices. All right. One more moment here. All right, I do have a question here about finding the cost to the HTML5. Actually, if you go into your PhotoBiz uh, control panel and click Main at the top of your PhotoBiz account, and then click on the HTML5 icon, you will see the cost there. You will also see your loyalty discount if it's applied to your account, and see the corresponding cost to that as well. All right, we have a question here. Does it play on Apple products which don't have Flash? Yes, HTML5 takes Flash completely out of the equation, and this will be seen on every device out there. All right, one more moment here. Okay, we do have a couple of folks out there that missed the beginning of the webinar, and the question is, can you import your uh, content from your flash to your HTML5 site. Yes, you can easily import um, 
the content from your Flash to your HTML site, HTML5 site, and it will import your images, um, your text, um, your SEO information, uh, so on and so forth. So yes, it will. We have a question here if, um, that, that's asking if, if you have unlimited galleries and pages on the, um, the Flash site, will it come over to the HTML5? Um, that is correct. You will have actually unlimited pages on the HTML5 site. Um, so yes. We do have a question here, do you have to upgrade or do you have to switch over? Um, no, not at all. We're still supporting um, the Flash HTML sites and we're still actually putting out new Flash templates. So this is simply just another option for you or another product that we're offering uh, to our customers. All right, one more moment here. All right, thank you everyone for holding. Uh, I do have a question here. Will this webinar be available on YouTube? It absolutely will. Look on our uh, YouTube page in here in a couple of days and you should see um, a recording of it on YouTube. And from there, it looks like we'll be, we'll be wrapping up here. Um, please, any questions that I did not answer, um, give us a call here at, uh, at PhotoBiz. The number, 866-463-7620. Uh, get in contact with our passionate support team, and we'll be happy to go over any questions that you may have. Thank you, everyone, for joining me today. Hope everyone has a wonderful day.